Welcome to the Always On Podcast. I am your host, Duncan McPherson. And on this podcast, our objective is to enable our audience to always be working on their business and on themselves personally and professionally. And on today's podcast, I had a great conversation with Jen Payer, who heads up a company called Nature Provides. You will not want to miss this conversation because in this episode, we discussed actionable ideas for how to foster healthy bench strength. So how to contribute to a strong, healthy team. If you like this podcast, please like and share and tell your colleagues. If you have any ideas or topics you would like to hear on this podcast in the future, just let us know. Thanks for listening. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to have this conversation with Jen Payer. I think you're really going to enjoy this. Uh, As you notice, the theme of the conversation is healthy bench strength. And uh, our entire team of Pareto Systems, uh, our goal is to help our clients uh, strengthen their relationships and their clients' appreciation for the team's people, practice, and process. We want your clients to trust all three. But of course, your people are so incredibly important. And uh, in a perfect world, we want you to create a culture, an environment where it goes so far beyond uh, your team members' credentials and professional dependability. We want you to think about this panoramically uh, to add a greater sense of personal fulfillment in their lives, a sense of belonging, and a sense that they can achieve self actualization, right? The best version of themselves. And that incorporates so many pieces. Um, There's three things that I really want to cover in this conversation uh, with Jen. First of all, I want to get into your story because it's so fascinating and your your backstory from the financial services space. Uh, I just love that. I want to provide our uh, audience with an action plan, actionable steps that they can deploy And there's so much credibility here because I've done it myself in my own business. It's early, but really positive feedback. And then Jen, I wanna get into a deep dive around success stories, um, uh, around people who have really bought in to what you do. So Jen Payer, thank you for being here. And I wanna just go right in and put you on the spot. I wanna talk about the lightning strike that occurred in your life that prompted you to be in the health and wellness space. Well, sure, thank you. And I'm so excited to be here with you and to share a little bit about my story. Um, I was, you know, I grew up in a small town in Dayton, Ohio, and I was a nature loving tomboy. I was super connected. There wasn't a tree I didn't climb, a creek I didn't crawl into. And, uh, you know, as I grew up, I ended up going to college to get a degree in finance. And uh, it became a very lucrative career. I was in financial services for 29 years. And uh, I spent a lot of time sitting at a desk, sitting in front of a computer, traveling on an airplane. And so really, I lost that connection from my childhood where I was connected to nature and had balance, right? Nature is typically in balance. And I, uh, I did just about every role in financial services except for mortgage and commercial banking. Everything else I touched in some way, shape, or form over my career, and the last 10 years of my career was focused on business transformation. So it was really focused on helping businesses transform their processes to meet customer demand and needs. And it's interesting because now I look at what I'm doing and I actually transform people. So I took a lot of the skills and the tools that I learned in my financial services roles and apply them in personal lives as well. So uh, my My interesting curve that happened to me while I was riding along in my career was in 2008, I was traveling to Boston every week. I had a corporate apartment. That was the theme in my life. I had corporate apartments all over the United States, and I was traveling Monday through Thursday every week. And while I was away, I also have four kids. While I was away, I was, you know, all in at work. And so it wasn't unusual for me to work 14, 15, 16 and sometimes more than that, hours per day. 
And, uh, and then when I came home, I was super mom. I was making up for the time of being away from my family. And so everything that I did was really about putting out, you know, to others, to work, to my family. And I really didn't have anything left in the tank. And it showed up in 2008 when my lymph nodes were the size of golf balls, literally, you know, big, huge balls around my neck. And I went to the doctor, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was on a Friday afternoon when I came back from Boston and I was diagnosed with pneumonia, bronchitis. I had shingles around my torso, tachycardia, which is a precursor to a heart attack. And I was diagnosed with mono, which is what was causing the lymph nodes happening in my neck. And eventually I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue, which is kind of a long-term, you know, just immune system shutdown in the body. And during that time, uh, you know, after I was taking in this information from my doctor, I, I was in the traditional path. It was antibiotics, steroids, Ambien to help me sleep. So I walked out of his office with a plethora of, of prescription drugs and with the message that, Jen, if you don't change your life, you won't be here in five years. And uh, that was my, oh, what the heck moment. So I came home from that visit and again, it was on a Friday and um, I, I was just, you know, a little bit in shock of how did this happen? You know, I was an exerciser. I ate healthy. I did all the, you know, the quote unquote right things. And here I found myself in this situation. What, what happened? How did, how, how did I get here? And uh, I'm an avid reader and I, I like to constantly improve myself. And so I was going through my bookshelves. And a book that I had purchased maybe 10 years earlier and I had skimmed through literally fell on my head. And uh, so I paid attention. Uh, I'm a big believer that the universe gives us signals when it's time and when we're ready to see and hear them. And I sat down and I read the book cover to cover. And on Sunday night, I looked at my husband and said, guess what? I'm going to a four-year healing school. So that book was called Hands of Light. And that launched me into a completely different pathway um, while I still stayed in my corporate role. So still in financial services, but I believe when we are aligned to our purpose, we get supported. And so I was supported to, for four years, go to a, a, a healing school. I also became a medicinal aromatherapist. I really started studying plants and I was using essential oils at that time to support my health and recovery. I also became a master gardener and I got my yoga certification. So it was like game on, right? My type A in financial services went to type A in, in healing. And really it was a personal journey to really understand, you know, how I got there. And uh, so still humming along, everything was great. I really had great balance in my life for quite a period of time. And uh, really working with the plants, really working with, you know, nutrition and just being in balance all, you know, all around. And uh, then in 2015, I got back out of balance. Um, so that's when the two by four came. So in 2015, I was diagnosed with metastasized breast cancer. And at that point, um, you know, stage four is terminal. I was diagnosed with stage three B because I had it in my lymphatic system. And so that was my, okay, you know, here we go again. How did this happen again? And it really gave me a moment to pause and really look at what was going on in my life. And a lot of it was centered around stress, but a lot of it was centered also around continuing to chase something, continuing to give all my energy all of my time to something other than myself. So I really was still not nourishing myself, even though I was eating right, healthy, all that stuff. So at that point, that was pause number two. And that was the biggest one for sure that really shifted my career at that time to take all of the things that I had been learning in the healing space and to apply them to myself. This time around, when I was um, talking to the Western doctors, I, I did two consults. I didn't like the answer. So the answer was, you know, the big three, which is surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. And I could feel it in my body. No, 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 no. And what was so drastic or dramatic about that is I was told I wouldn't be able to work. I would be too sick to work. 
and I would be too sick or immunocompromised to be around my children. And so at that moment, I said, okay, this doesn't work for me. And so again, I went back in, inside and really started looking at what my options were. And I knew it was not that path. So at, at that time, I had been traveling cross country to California. I live on the East Coast. And I, um, I found a holistic clinic that said, you know, you have an immunocompromised system. Chemotherapy and radiation will further suppress your immunity. So let's focus on building up your immune system. Let's focus on moving stress out of your life. And let's, let's focus on you returning to who you're meant to be, which is a you know, healthy, thriving human being. And so that's what I did for five months. I flew out to California and I did my treatment out there. I would come home on the weekends. So still the, the travel warrior. Um, I never got sick. Uh, so I never um, I stayed healthy the whole time. I did lose a little bit of weight. I was doing a lot of different um, healing modalities. And, uh, you know, I, I got healthy. And at that time, that's when I decided that my, my mission in corporate was complete. And it was time to take all of this knowledge and this information that I had. I was a guinea pig to then bring out to others and help others transform the way that I had started to transform. And that's when I, uh, I, I left my corporate role in 2017. And in 2018, I started my own essential oil company. So essential oils are pretty well known across, across the globe. There's a couple of big billion dollar companies out there. But I really wanted something that was organic and that I knew was clean and I knew where they were coming from. And so my husband, who's French Canadian, uh, turned his Google search into French and found a whole, um, whole group of farmers and a co-op. And I started calling them and asking them about their ingredients. And then we actually flew out and uh, met with the farmers and so made the decision to do that. And that is another big piece of this shift in my life is I became my own health advocate. So for me, our health is our greatest asset. And I say that hands down from anything else. If we don't have our health, we have nothing. And so uh, th that was really a big point of me becoming my own health advocate, becoming my own researcher and moving out of the doctor knows better than I do to know this is my body. I've got to listen to it. And it knows exactly what it needs. And I uh, then in 2019 was divinely guided to these embryonic plant stem cells. And that's when I formed the company Nature Provides. And again, that was another fall on the head book moment where I was visiting a friend and her husband came out, who's a doctor, who's a chiropractor, and he was holding this bottle. And he said, do you see this? This is, this has healed so many of my patients. And I inquired, well, you know, what is it? And he said, it's an embryonic plant stem cell. And when he said it, I had this bolt of lightning come through my body, almost like the book. There just wasn't a book, but I had the same reaction of, oh my gosh, what was that? And uh, in that moment, I knew I needed to learn about it. And so I went to a conference a few months later. It was all doctors. I'm not a doctor, uh, but I do, you know, I have studied a lot about health. I know a lot and I knew a lot about the plants. And I surprised myself at how much I was connected to the plants and how much I knew about the plants in this conference that I attended. And on the last day of the conference, the owner said he would be selling his company. And I had that same bolt of lightning come through. And so I, yeah, I feel very grateful that I've been divinely led at key pivotal turns in my life. And now my focus, Nature Provides, is all about bringing nature, bringing people back to their natural state of health. I'm a huge believer that we have these miraculous bodies and our bodies know how to heal, but we live in a super toxic environment. You know, our air is polluted, our food is polluted. We have chemicals in our water that stay in our body unless you proactively take them out. So we live in toxic soup. And I look back, even though I was eating healthy and I was exercising, I was traveling every week. There's a lot of radiation when you're traveling. 
you're in airports. So sometimes you're grabbing the fast food, right? Just to have something in your body. And I wasn't sleeping well. So all those things, you know, I, when I work with people, I tell them that, you know, it's really important to detoxify because we all have toxins in our body and it doesn't matter how healthy you eat. It doesn't matter how much sleep you get. It's, it's part of our environment. And it's interesting. Something I learned in healing school is that to get the same nutritional value of an apple from 50 years ago, that you would need to eat eight apples. So why is that? Because we've put NPK fertilizer on our soil. We've started using more herbicides and pesticides. So we've depleted our soil. So without good soil, there's not as much nutritional value in the food that we're eating. So that so by definition, that. that by definition is part of what they, when they say empty calories. That right? is so, exactly part of what's going on. Okay. You have to eat a lot more to get the same value. Well, <clears throat> first of all, I don't know what it is about the always on podcast, but we keep attracting these underachievers. You know, like imagine if you really buckled down, Jen, and really applied yourself and got to work. <laughs> No, oh, your credibility is just uh, unbelievable. I, I, I've obviously heard that story before, your personal story, and uh, I still, it's very moving. Uh, you know, you reminded me a long time ago when I was traveling extensively, I was having a conversation with a friend about stress. He said, one of the reasons why, and he said this directly to me, he said, one of the reasons why you're stressed is because when you're on the road, you're thinking about home. And when you're at home, you're thinking about the road. So you're not really present and that's eating at you. And it's so subtle, it's so gradual, but it's having an impact. And that was really brought to light because not too, too long ago, my kids are older now, they're on to post-secondary education. And my wife and I were, we finally went into this closet where we had buried all of their toys. And it was a trip through memory lane because we were deciding what are we gonna keep? Because the nostalgia, the value is just too high. I can't get rid of this. And what are we gonna give away? The boxes and boxes that we gave away, we kept a lot, but that we gave away. And it was unbelievable. It was like a time capsule because I literally, as I'm going through and sorting these toys, I'm looking at all the toys that I bought in airports it was like a coping mechanism a, a gift a guilt gift i would i had to come home with something but um I, i'm trying to let that hindsight serve me but it's interesting about entrepreneurs um you talk about balance because entrepreneurs business professionals so ambitious and a lot of ambitious people are not content it's just go, go, go more, more, more. And not just because of what it gets us, but just that's how we're wired and getting into this space of balance where there's contentment and ambition. I think that is ideal, but um, I, I want to tie in your journey to how you and I came to meet. So I was introduced to you by somebody who's very special to you and to me. Yes. Uh, Mo, right? Mo Young? Yes. You've known him a long, I've known him a long time. And uh, you think about degrees of separation and how we've come together because of Mo and Mo's advocacy. And you know the saying, consider the source, right? So there are some people when they tell you to do something, it's like, okay, that's good advice. And then there's other people who tell you to do something and you can literally feel the conviction in their advocacy. So Mo and I were talking about health. And uh, he turned me on to Nature Provides. So I started kicking your tires before we even met. You weren't aware that I existed. But as I'm watching videos and I watched a podcast video, I watched, I, I consumed all kinds of information on your site. And then the, the premise of uh, plant stem cells, which is a fascinating study, all of that 
the instincts in me, it was, it was palpable. So on the practical side, like I get it. Trying to feed 7 billion people every day, it's not easy. Supply chain, just logistics. Um, but the unintended consequence, obviously the byproduct of a lot of that is, like you said, preservatives, pesticides, modifications, and various toxins that land somewhere as we consume what we consume. They, they, they sit in places in our body. This is what I've learned from you. And we have to, they don't belong there. We have to get them moving, get them out. Um, so, so what I'd like to shift to is just trying to find that balance between modern medicine and timeless nature-based um, solutions that are more proactive. And, and I, I want to sync this up with my action plan. Because what I did, Jen, and you know this, I said, okay, I'll be the proof of concept. I called you up. We had our initial conversation. I told you where I am in my life and what I was thinking and what was nagging at me. You did your diagnostic, your assessment, and you told me this is what you should do. And I did it. And 90 days, I could feel it in my, I, my skin, my hair. I had many people say to me, something's going on. Something's changing in you. I can see it in your eyes, right? The windows. Yes. And um, that was profound, 90 days. And I'm still into it. But now what I've done, respectfully, subtly, in the spirit of trying to um, encourage a conversation around proactive health is I've made your solutions available to my team. So I've got a collection of 25 people on our bench locally and spread out. And I've just said, this is what I'm doing. And I encourage you to do the same. And I'll even prompt it with uh, a gift card for Nature Provides. And it's early, but the energy that this initiative is creating to encourage healthy bench strength is something that I want to encourage to others to consider. So let's, let's first of all talk about what is a plant stem cell and what is it designed to do for us? Okay. There actually is quite a bit of science about plant stem cells. It originated in Europe and pretty well known in, in the Belgium, actually Romania has it a lot. It's very different than an adult herb. So most people are familiar with adult herbs. And these from the bottle may look the exact same, but they are entirely different. So an embryonic plant stem cell is picked in the springtime only, and it's the new growth on the tree, on the bush. And it comes from the buds, the roots, the young shoots, or the germinating seeds of that plant. That's it. The spectacular thing is in that embryonic stage, so within four hours of picking those buds, they have to be macerated or they start to lose the healing properties. A couple of interesting facts is they carry the entire genetic makeup of the plant. So you're getting everything that that plant, the leaves, the branch, the, um, you know, the roots, everything about that plant you're getting in the embryonic stage. You're also getting additional phytohormones that only exist in that stage. So as soon as the plant starts to produce chlorophyll, those healing properties diminish. So what are those healing properties? Well, these are the healing properties that actually drain toxins from the cells. So they go directly into the cells and they start pulling the toxins out. I, I feel that it's a step beyond detoxification. It's actually referred to as drainage. So it's draining toxins from the cells. It's draining toxins that have built up between the cells. So why does that matter? Well, that matters because our cells are always communicating, always communicating with each other. And when you have toxins or toxicants sitting in between the cells, they can't communicate effectively. Something that I experienced when I was going through my, uh, my cancer journey is I was taking at one point, probably no less than 120 supplements a day, minimum. Okay, I was like throwing mouthfuls of pills. 
And guess what? My blood work wasn't changing. It was almost like my body couldn't absorb, you know, the turmeric and the quercetin and all these wonderful supplements that I was taking. My body couldn't take them in because it was still toxic. And once I started on these embryonic plant stem cells, then my blood work drastically changed. I even had some nice surprises. So I'm in my mid fifties and I went and had a scan to look at my heart. I don't have any heart problems, but my father did. So it's in my family and to look at the plaque in my arteries. And I had zero. The doctor was shocked. He said, how can this be? You know, I would expect to th- see this in a 17 year old you know, runner or an athlete, not somebody your age. So I started getting these really nice surprises. So my, all of my cancer markers had dropped way down into the normal range. So as a cancer survivor, I call it cancer thriver, you, you're, you, know, you still want to get blood work to just make sure everything's okay. And so everything completely shifted when I started, started taking these. My eyes changed. I go back and look at pictures. I look 10 years older back in 2017, if not 15, than I do now. Our friend Mo, same thing. He looks younger because they're pulling, you know, the organs that suffer from toxins are the liver, the kidneys, the lymphatic system, and the skin. So when you have toxins, it ages us as well. So that's what I've noticed. But what these things, what these um, plant stem cells do is they pull those toxins out. And then they actually start to rebuild things that have broken. So if you have cartilage that has, you know, worn down in your knee, it actually will start to rebuild because they have growth hormones. Some of these juvenile phytohormones are growth hormones. They actually start to rebuild. And in my study of plants, all plants bring us back into balance. So that's a, a physical aspect and it's also an emotional aspect. So plants are also good for anxiety. Right now we have anxiety off the charts and depression because of the lockdown and you know kind of what we're going through now the embryonic plant stem cells come back in and balance the nervous system and help reduce that anxiety so they're they're pretty spectacular i've fallen madly in love with them and i have seen just phenomenal shifts in um in in results right not just the outer appearance but what's happening on the inside you know, people that haven't been able to run for years Uh, I have somebody, I just received a testimonial a few days ago from a woman for 15 years, wasn't able to eat dairy, has had all kinds of stomach issues. And in three months, so maybe that's the magic number, she has had a complete turnaround. She said, I'm eating cheese and dairy for the first time in 15 years with no negative consequences. And I actually feel great. My energy levels, she had been suffering from a lot of fatigue. So I believe that pulling those toxins out give the body a chance to kind of kick in and do what it's designed to do. It's interesting. The first protocol you put me on, I was, uh, it's become a gateway. Like I'm so much more mindful about so many things regarding proactive preventative health. But I looked at a lot of the uh, um, bottles that you gave me and a lot of them came from Italy. And it was kind of interesting because if I remember correctly, when they harvest the buds, they harvest 20% of the plant so they don't harm the plant. Correct. And what's interesting is Vilfredo Pareto, the Pareto principle, he was Italian, an Italian economist. Some people would call that a contradiction in terms, right? (laughs) But back in the day, Vilfredo Pareto he said that 80% of the tomatoes come from 20% of the vines. So which, which led to the concept of pruning and obviously in wine pruning is big because it, it almost strengthens and activates what's left. So I'm assuming that when 20% of the buds are harvested, it doesn't harm the plant. Does it actually engage the plant to be stronger? Do you think? It does. Absolutely. It allows the plant to, it's just like pruning it. Like you said, it allows the plant to be more vital. Well, and two other, two other things to add to how these are made. So all of these plants are picked in the wild in the Apennine mountains. And what's significant about that is there's a different energetic component when a plant is in the wild. It's in its environment versus grown in a greenhouse, for example. 
So it has, they have a lot of energy and vitality just by being in the wild. Then in the production process, after these buds are picked and they're macerated, they're macerated in organic grape alcohol. And the reason that we use organic grape alcohol, one is that they're in Italy. Yes. So more accessible, but grape alcohol is not genetically modified. So most of the solvents that we have, corn alcohol, for example, is used in many you know, adult herb products, but it's genetically modified. And so it's, you know, it's biasing and putting more pollutant into the bottle. So we use the organic grape alcohol. There's glycerin to stabilize it. It's organic as well. And the plant material, and that's it. But what's interesting about the production process is the, um, the supplier uses spagyric method, which is a spinning of the material as it's macerated. Mm. And that also, it's a, it's a vortex. So it also adds energy to it. And then when they pull the plant material out after 28 days, they burn it to ash and then they put the ashes back into the vat. And these are huge containers and they spiralize it again. The reason that that matters is that is the oligo elements. That, those are the minerals coming from the plants that are coming back in. So not only are you getting these phytohormones, you're also getting minerals that are coming back in. So many of these have magnesium, they have zinc, depending on the plant and what you know, what's in the plant. So it's really some a of the whole... repairing repairing properties for the body based on being hard in our bodies if we're athletic or what have you. So it helps with the recovery. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I need to say, um, I'm I'm so very fortunate because my wife um has also embraced this. But I, I mentioned earlier the concept of the gateway, like we're 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 unified on this journey that we're on. Like we're we're now buying organic butter. And the sticker shock is huge, right? I mean, it's not cheap. But to compare and contrast the taste and the even the texture of organic butter to mass produced butter, it's it's not even close. Um but this a couple of days ago, we were at the farmer's market and we bought a chicken, free range organic chicken. It was huge. It was the size of a small turkey. Compared to some of the quail sized chickens we'd buy at the grocery store, but the taste, um, my wife made, we bought potatoes and she made mashed potatoes and she let me sample them. She said, what do you taste? I say, I, I, I can actually taste the soil in the potatoes. And they, they're just magnificent to look at. And so we have this sort of awakening, this awareness where it's expanded our thinking around what are we consuming so so there's a cascading effect and it's interesting i was uh reading something about farming and these mega factory farms and back in the day you know farmers used to let the soil rest and now they just go hard and pound it right because again they're trying to keep up with demand yes but the consequences of that is um the depletion um, I wanted to say, you, you said a word, and it's a word that really uh, got my attention early in our conversation, is the concept of drainage. So the body has all of these organs, and a lot of these pesticides and preservatives, as they work through our body, they end up landing and staying in these organs. So... That, that really got my attention when you talked about drainage. So just getting them to move and getting them to detach from the organs and getting flushed. Um, I, Jen, I can feel that. I really can. And I don't know if it's the self-fulfilling sort of uh, notion, but uh, I, I don't think so. The energy is different because I think, can I attribute that to the drainage? Oh, 100%, 100%. And the, and the vitality of the plants. So, you know, the, the comparison that I use is when a baby's born, a healthy baby is born, right? They have bright eyes, their skin is soft mm. and supple. They, you know, they're just exuding light and energy. And these embryonic plant stem cells are just like newborn babies. They exude that vitality. And as I mentioned, they carry the entire genetic makeup of the plant. And then they have these special healing properties to drain the organs and the cells and the tissues, right? That's where all of these toxins reside. 
Is it true? Did I read as I've been on this journey that the liver turns itself over every six weeks? Is Could that be right? A healthy liver, yes. Oh, okay. A healthy liver. Uh, a healthy not liver. so healthy liver takes more time or it just doesn't bother or what happens? It just, it almost, it's almost like it turns off. The self-regenerating aspects turn off. Okay. And, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty big proponent of even water. So as a society, we've really gone from, you know, tap water, then bottled water. I mean, it's a multi-billion dollar business, right? But the problem with that is you get the plastics and plastics have a, an estrogenic effect. That's why breast cancers have gone up. You know, I was an athlete. I always had a bottle of water, you know, in my hand. I know that that contributed to my, you know, health crisis for sure. But we also have fluoride and we have chlorine. And those are actually called forever, forever chemicals because they accumulate in the tissues, they accumulate in the organs. And unless you are proactively pulling them out, they won't leave the body. They'll just keep accumulating over time. And, you know, we are in a chronic health crisis. I don't believe in a panacea. I don't believe there's a one size fits all. And I'm not against Western medicine. I, I view, you know, these are a la carte options that we have. And I also strongly believe that this is the first step in the healing process, getting out of treating symptoms and treating the cause. And that is, you know, as a generalization, that's what plants do is they come into the body and they look at what's out of balance and they go in to correct the balance. That's why you can use the same plant for somebody who has high blood pressure and low blood pressure. Well, I've found over, over the years that um, we're in an era of instant gratification and there are certain actions people can take from a medicinal perspective that create an instant result. And sometimes it's just masking, but it's still instant where the proactive is more gradual, it's subtle, it's incremental but it is compounding. So we have to just buy into that incremental path. But I, I wanted to circle back for a second because uh, again, so I was introduced to you by a good friend. I kicked the tires. I took action personally. It activated my own conviction. And then as a business owner who cares very deeply about my bench strength, because none of what I've done is possible without my team. I just want to put the odds in their favor and just open up their awareness for taking responsibility and ownership to proactively just put the odds in their favor from a health perspective. And uh, that's what I'm asking the business owners who are listening in today to just consider. So a call to action for anybody who sees that merit is to click the link that we provide, provided, natureprovides.com forward slash Pareto. You'll see it there. And is the first point of contact, Jen, what I did was just have a conversation with you and yes. just understand it a little better. Is that the first step once they reach out to you? Yes, absolutely. And then, you know, do your own research, of course, and follow your instincts, but um, uh, take One, action. Sorry, go ahead. No, I didn't mean to interrupt you. One thing to add is we have a line of singles and we have single plants and um, plant stem cells and a line of complexes. Mm -hmm. So the reason we have that a lot, we do work with a lot of practitioners, holistic health practitioners, and they are very familiar with the single plants and they you know, know what they want to prescribe for their patients. And they, we have a pretty long line of that. We also have complexes. They're very self-explanatory. And if somebody isn't interested in calling or having a consult, they can go look and they can look at the complexes. A complex could be something like allergy lift or somebody who has severe allergies. It's amazing. And those are mm. pretty self-explanatory and would not require that. So I just wanted to share that. Oh, that's good. And I'm sure it's, um, I, I don't want to say a rabbit hole. I'm just saying, I'm just assuming is that once you really venture into this space, there's infinite possibilities in terms of actions one can take 
to work on specific things. I do want to mention this, that when, when Mo made the introduction and he told me over the phone, the website, I forgot the dash. So I went to nature provides and ended up in the United Kingdom on a website that's in the uh, health space. I will tell you, it reminded me, um, I have a friend who is a life coach and uh, she really emphasizes the dash in life. Uh, her name is Tamara Shepard, really great person. And her emphasis on the dash is that you look at a gravestone, date of birth, date of passing, the dash is in between, that's your life. And living in the moment, the essence of Zen, I learned a long time ago, the essence of Zen is that you could live to be 100 or it could all be over tomorrow. So live your life accordingly, right? No regrets, but do some planning. So that dash, to me, when I look at nature provides with the dash, it, 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 it triggers something in me. It's, it's really um, a call to action for me. So I just want to put that out there for everybody is you have to do nature provides, but nature dash provides dot com and then forward slash Pareto because we are big, big fans and advocates of Jen Payer and nature provides. I just want to say thank you. I want to have you back and go deeper into this. If nothing else, just selfishly, because uh, you've you've got an apostle here. I'm all in. So uh, any closing it. comments or uh, last uh, points you want to make? Just two points. Be your own health advocate. Do your own research. And your health truly is your greatest asset. Invest in it. It's worth it. Well, and as a leader, you can't pour from an empty cup, right? I mean, you can tell your team to take their health seriously. But something even more, your actions of living it yourself and letting them see the, the metamorphosis in yourself by taking some simple little steps, it amps up your credibility. And then if they take action on your advocacy, I, I am convinced it impacts the culture. It impacts the productivity. It impacts the commitment they have to clients. It impacts your enterprise value. I think the, the benefit, there's a multitude of benefits that come from this simple action. So Jen, thanks very much. Absolute pleasure. Never, uh, I mean, I just love the story and the origins and I appreciate the fact that you're now in our lives and uh, look forward to having another conversation like this again soon. So grateful to be here. Thank you so much, Duncan. You're amazing. Oh, thanks a lot. Right back at you.